So according to a recent article in the St. Paul Legal Ledger Capital mm -hmm. Report, two transportation funding sources are about to run dry. They are the, um, the trunk fu highway funds mm -hmm. and some federal dollars. Right. And this is going to cost approximately $250 million when the next fiscal cycle begins in two years. It's not a budget year next session, but have you already begun to address this issue? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's what we call the fiscal cliff. And so we're going to see a severe drop off in our ability to continue the same level of services and around transportation, whether that's keeping up our roads and keeping them free of potholes or building additional capacity or you know making sure that we're providing appropriate levels of transit service. It's going to be uh, Minnesotans will really notice the difference. I mean, already we just we just had a report a couple of weeks ago that came out of the Reason Foundation that showed Minnesota rural roads are 49th out of 50 states in terms of upkeep, accidents, capacity. I mean, we we're at the back of the line now. Transportation is supposed to be one of those things that really aids our economy, but transportation, if you don't keep up with it, can be a constraint on your ability to economically grow. And we're getting to that point in Minnesota. So we're starting to really pull together the stakeholders, develop a campaign to have that broader discussion with the public about getting ready for 2014 and pursuing, again, this transportation bill that we passed in the Senate, but ran into the ground in, in uh, the House and the governor wasn't too enthusiastic. And he really wants the commissioner to go out and help tell the story and, and create the the political momentum to get something good done on transportation. And in your opinion, what is the story? What are you doing to try to get all the shareholders in place? Well, you know, just really talking about how, you know, we either pay now or we pay later. You pay a little bit of money, you invest in the form of uh, some resources, some revenue, uh, and you get so much return on the dollar. You know, in, by some measure, six to one for roads, 11 to one for transit. This money, a dollar in for transit, you get that much out in terms of economic output and productivity and in improving people's lives, or we pay in the form of decreased capacity, lost economic opportunity, congestion, the inability of getting goods to services, inability for people to get home and spend time with their family. That's real money. So we're paying regardless. Either we're paying in a productive way or we're paying in a way that really detracts from the state. And we get out and we talk about that. And people really understand this is something that the public sector does, that we do all together as people. We come together, we build roads, provide for transit service, and our lives get better and our economy improves, and we just engage that conversation. Where those dollars come from seem to have been the, the sticky point thus far, right. trying to pass a higher sales tax on gas or gas tax. Right. The governor didn't really have an appetite for it. Mm -hmm. Some members of the GOP did, some members of the DFL didn't. Yeah, right. some members right. in the Senate voted down. So first, let's talk about this. Is it something you'll even bother pursuing next session? Is it something that you think you can get people on board with? Or do you need to buy, find other viable options here for dollars? Well, I'm all ears if people have great ideas for other viable options. But for the time being, um, I think the gas tax in terms of roads and bridge funding, along with you know our license to have fees or motor vehicle sales tax, are going to carry the freight. Um, there, there's some other places where we can go to, to do some additional financing, you know, some, some other stuff, but none of that really uh, gets to the level of, of productivity that we, that we need to get to for the time being. There's other ideas out there, but they're going to take some, some time to develop around mileage-based user fees or something like that, taxing alternative forms of, of fuel, you know, but, but we're just really not going to be able to, to find the, the capacity. I think absolutely it's about, and the, the, governor's, the governor's admonition was go out and create the the political space, the, the larger public will to get something even bigger done than was even proposed last year. So we take his direction to heart, and I think that's our task. Senator, in your opinion, is Minnesota currently at a crossroads as far as transportation funding is concerned? Uh, Minnesota is absolutely at a crossroads. We can make a decision to make these investments now, or we'll just continue to fall further and further behind. Right now, the metro area, Twin Cities metropolitan area, is behind. Uh, it's not about maintaining our place. It's not about um, you know, st staying ahead of the game. We've fallen behind a number of other metropolitan areas with whom we compete for mobility, uh, for economic vitality, for those quality of life investments. Transportation is a key part of that. Young professionals who are looking for where they want to live, they're looking for the emerging metropolitan areas that offer the quality, the type of life, and the amenities that they want. They're very mobile and they're very uh, particular about what they want. They want vital, vibrant, urban areas. And we don't have that to offer right now because we have a really deficient, substandard, second-rate transit system in this metro area that gives, you know, that creates the kind of, kind of 
public realm amenities and infrastructure that, that young professionals just aren't interested in. So we can make a decision that we're going to continue to be a competitive state, top tier, or we're just going to have to settle for mediocrity. Okay, with those words, Senator Scott Dibble, thank you for coming in and sharing your thoughts on both of these topics. We appreciate your time as always. Great. Thanks, Julie.